Hey guys, Thunder E here and welcome to our four month look at the LG G7 ThinQ. Yes, four months, it's been around for a while. This device is sorely underrated because it packs a lot, but we're already talking about the LG V40 ThinQ. I had to think about the naming structure there because that's the latest device that's gonna be coming out from LG. They sent out um, invites for it, but I really wanna get back to the G7 ThinQ and what it brings to the table, how I've used it for this time, and how it's something that, again, has been sorely underrated. Now, the G7 ThinQ, we did our 30-day review, we looked at different aspects of this device, and I've used it from quite a bit. Now, it's not, it's not a daily driver for me, I've used it on and off. I got back again, I used it for about two weeks just to get my hands back on this device. And some of the things I, I do like still maintains. Now, the G7 ThinQ, the first thing, the most important thing for me on this device is the built-in quad DAC. That is one thing that LG has done well in the audio department, and they have not failed on this device. Whether you're plugging in your headphones, it doesn't matter what kind of headphones you're using, like for instance, the brand new piano headphones, which are actually pretty good. They're only like 59 bucks. I'm still testing them out, but trust me, if you're looking for a pair of cheap headphones in your buds, definitely go pick them out. I'll leave a link for you guys down below. But plugging headphones into the G7 ThinQ, the quad DAC, the amp that's built in, it gives you some, oh my God. My buddy Juan Bagnell will, can tell you just as much how much I love this device for audio. But that's not the only aspect too. This is also the device that has the loudest speaker on any smartphone. I didn't say the best, I said the loudest speaker on any smartphone. We've done two speaker comparison tests with others, and you guys can check out those videos. And the LG G7 ThinQ has won, whether you're holding the device on its own, or you're placing on the surface, um, it just gives you the loudest sound. So if you're looking for something that's loud, where you need a speaker with us for gaming or, or just to listen to music or watch videos, G7 ThinQ does that quite well. So LG has excelled on those aspects now. Now, this is powered by the Snapdragon 845 processor. We know how great that processor is. Comes in four and six gigabyte variants. Android uh, uh, manufacturers, please stop doing that. Just give me one. I would honestly like that. That's that's just how I, I see it there. You've got expandable storage uh, via micro SD with the 512. There's also 64 gigabyte variants in terms of storage and 128. Now, in terms of the cameras, you're looking at a front-facing camera. I think it's eight megapixels to 12 megapixel rear cameras. Now, the camera has some functionality here with AI. I don't know why people like to call these things AI. That's just a pet peeve. I'm saying that out there, but. This also is where LG failed me on the camera. Now, a lot of people have talked to the camera on this device. The camera is good. I just don't like using the AI functionalities here because it doesn't hit the right spots for me. Sometimes uh, it has a hard time recognizing what uh, is in frame and you see different names pop up or um, it doesn't give me the right just look and feel for the picture. Now, the manual controls on the camera is where it really shines, especially video recording. Um, if you're recording video on this thing, it does a really good job with, you know, going through a granular system of giving you more controls that feels like your DSLR, which is what I'm using right now. Uh, and it does a really good job on that. Now, they had some issues with uh, 4K HDR, uh, 4K in earlier on, but uh, I think they fixed some of that with, of course, uh, software updates. Uh, but it was, for me, it felt a little bit hit and miss. It wasn't fresh off the, you know, out of the box. It didn't feel as tight. And that's something LG has done in the past. I would like to see them improve that. Even on this device, I'm sure they can do with software updates. But as you move to something like the V40, the V line is a creator line. And I would like to see those improvements right there. Now, battery life has been pretty good on this device. I think the battery life, the, the battery is a 3000 milliamp battery, 30, it's, it's on screen for you guys there. But it's been really solid in this device. You've got the wireless charging, you've got uh, fast charging as well. So you've got all those lifestyle features, water resistance is fine. Now this is said to have military spec grading, which I com found complete to be bullshit. I'll say that again, bullshit. Very simple, it's all glass. So of course, as you can see on my G7 ThinQ, it's cracked. Same thing happened on my V30 as well from last year. You can see both devices side by side. They both have a crack in it and they have the military spec grading. So to me, it's, uh, it makes no sense. Gorilla Glass 5 
has been a failure for this kind of stuff. Uh, and of course, it's also a huge fingerprint magnet. Now you've got a fingerprint sensor at the back, fast, responsive, so that part is there. You've got facial recognition, nothing too crazy. But that moves me to what we should expect with the uh, V40. V40 spec-wise, you're looking at the 845. It's gonna, it's gonna have an OLED display instead of the LCD display. So we'll see how that actually compares. Now, LG's LCD display is really good in sunlight. We did a video test on that as well. You guys can go check that out. Uh, we'll like to see how the OLED display, the pure OLED display on the V40 handles. You're looking at six gigs of RAM on the V40. You're looking at uh, storage up to 128 in terms of rumors, but three cameras at the back. One that will include a telephoto and a wide. LG usually does a wide angle lens. The telephoto here is to improve the bokeh modes. And of course, of course you have a standard camera as well. A dual camera setup with a front eight and a five. And of course, this time we're hearing stereo boom speakers for the V40. So that's gonna be pretty cool. And a bigger battery, I think at 3300 or so. So um, there's a lot of things that will help improve what they've done with the G7 and as they move to the V40. Now that being said, that doesn't mean this device I'm holding in my hand is a bad device. It's really solid. Um, as I said, audio is something that's stellar here. Video recording is really good. Photos is, is good. Uh, it's not as good as it should be. That's the way I'll actually put it for you. Got a really solid battery life. Software, I would like to see LG make some changes with the software. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it. It just feels like there's a lot more. A lot of other manufacturers have kind of trimmed down the look and feel. The LG um, G7 thing Q feels a little bit more cumbersome. So hopefully that changes with the V40. That's what I think. That's just my own thought process there with this. But um, I do like the device. It's light, it's portable. Uh, when I say portable, it just feels light. It doesn't feel heavy like, say like the Galaxy Note line or even the Galaxy S line, which actually feels heavier than this. Um, I think there's a lot to see with this device that if you're looking to pick up the device now, this will give you a lot of bang for your buck. I think it's running for about 449 right now or something like that. This is an absolute steal because you're still getting a uh, high-end processor in here. You're getting a lot of functionality on this device. You're getting a solid camera. You're getting a fantastic audio experience. Now, as I'm talking about this device here, I say, yes, definitely pick it up if you want to pick up something cost-effective that still has a premium feel and also uh, is a top-tier device. But as we move to the V40, I hope the V40 can separate itself from just being an improved G7 ThinQ. That's what I'm afraid of uh, because of the design aesthetics look similar from all the leaks. Plus also you have the notch. Now, some people ask me about that. Do I like the notch or not? I have covered the notch completely uh, and it's made my bezel thicker, which is for me personally kind of annoying. I just don't like the notch and I don't like that whole system of covering it. It's stop, make notchless devices or thinner bezels, please. Just don't do that. We just have to wait and see how this uh, the V40 handles. But I think for most people, if you're looking to save money, picking up the LG G7 ThinQ is a, is a good buy. I think you'll like it. I think you get good use functionality of it. You will love the fact that the headphone jack is there, not just because it's there, but because it gives you absolutely fantastic audio. That's one of the things I, I love about this device. And also all the other features are really solid altogether. So if you have any questions, any comments about the G7 ThinQ after four months, or you're thinking to pick up the LG V40 ThinQ and you want to leave some thoughts on that, let me know. Leave your thoughts down below. Also guys, we will be at the LG event on October 3rd. We'll give you our coverage, so definitely stay tuned, check that out, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell to get notified with our latest videos so you can get that video about the V40 uh, ThinQ. Otherwise guys, thank you very much and Always enjoy your entertainment.